Welcome to Creative Studio Live for yet another week. In this episode of the show, we are talking all about myths, about home recording myths. Are they true? Are they not? What can we do about them? And it wouldn't be Creative Studio Live without my co-host, Mike, from Creative Source. How are you doing this evening, Mike? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm good. I'm good, Pete. Yeah. I was doing this, um, what do they call it? Dabbing. Dabbing, it's that you have to have a hand up on the head or something. Oh, yeah, do that. Yeah, okay, okay. I, think, I, I don't know. The, see, this is this is how cool we are. These are dance moves from about six or seven years ago. That's uh, we're right up with it, isn't it? The the floss now that you do. We're off track already, Mike. We're talking about myths today, but uh, first of all, we want to understand what is happening in creative source land. You've had a busy week. I'm very very busy behind the scenes. Can't tell you really what's all top secret. Actually, what's Ooh. going. But you told us I last week. You remember uh, that, right? Yes, I did release. For those of you who <laughs> like free stuff, um, I did release a video this week about free piano uh, VST plugins, um, which I quite enjoyed because you always need a piano, don't you? Well, you don't always need a piano, of course, but most, a lot of the time, you need a piano. In fact, for drum solos, you don't need a piano, for example. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I made a video yeah. about um, about. Uh, piano plugins and that was very very enjoyable and um i have been busy 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 making music for my undisclosed big project which i can't talk about to anyone which yes and, and, and if you want to find out about the can't talk about project that you can't tell anyone about just go to last week's show because he told us all about it but anyway <laughs> uh we'll we'll, uh, we'll move on uh yeah so no it's and, yeah. and over, over on studio live today i've been doing a video a day which is uh what, what kind of what i do uh all the time but no it's been it's been good times yeah. good fun and lots going on like uh, apple keep releasing different ios versions so i'm i noticed um, that yeah <laughs> that's busy doesn't it oh, mate. Yeah. Keeps me keeps me very busy. I'm like trying to create music, and instead, I'm I'm explaining uh, like software and uh, and APIs and like all this other stuff that I don't actually understand. So uh, it, it's all good though. Um, yeah, it's pl plenty of stuff going on. If you if you're a mobile, you a quick, yeah. you're talking about mobile and and all that. Can I do a quick sort of pre myth, right? Oh, oh, okay, pre myth. We're we're getting into it. Yeah, Love it. So Hang there's on. a myth going around that um you you have to uh, be on iOS to run GarageBand on your mobile, right? Mm -hmm. And that's true, you do. I've got Android. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can't do it. GarageBand. So um, <laughs> I, I watch all of your videos, even though I've got an Android uh, phone. So one of these days, you never know, next upgrade, I might come over to the other side. There you yeah. go. That, that, mm. that is scary. Well, yeah, and that is the, the, the myth that is true is that you do need to be on an iOS device to actually run GarageBand. And I even have a video on that. Like uh, speaking of myths, I have a video and I'll, I'll tell you this quick story and then we'll actually start the actual show. Uh, okay. But yeah, a lot of people try to download. There's a lot of people, those shysters out there. Can I say the word shyster? I don't really know what it means, but it means bad. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, no, that's shy. Anyway. Um, the, the, the day that you can download on Windows. So, for instance, they're like, hey, you don't have a Mac? Download this great version of GarageBand for Windows, and they'll have screenshots, and they'll have videos, and they'll have oh, an yeah. executable yeah. link that you can – all you need to do is click this one executable yeah. link, and then you'll be all good. Just mm -hmm. run this executable link. And uh, if you've been on the internet for more than about five minutes, you'd know that you never just click an executable link from a non-reputable site no. because it's just basically going to sell all your credit card numbers to, like – Russian gangsters yes. and uh, all of your family history is right. going to be erased, or something yeah. bad's going to happen. Surely. Okay, that's that's. I mean, you you're saying Russian gangsters. I mean, that's a generalization. I'm sure there's oh, some that's Russian. Gangsters. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah it was GarageBand.ru that I was uh, on at the time. So uh, that's that's why I said Russians. It could easily have been anyone else from anywhere in the world. Look at this. We've already been rude. We've already been yeah, waffling. Uh, yeah, you've been <laughs> rude to Russians. I had a thought in my head as you were talking. I was going to say something rude about Nigerians, but <sighs> when you were talking about scams and things, but I didn't luckily say anything about Nigerians. So, yeah. No, that is good. good. Should we talk mm. myth? Should we talk home we'll recording talk myths? We've got a lot to get through, and we've got 25 mm -hmm. minutes because we've waffled for five. So, um, yeah, let, let's talk about myths. And as usual, I'm going to throw it over to my guest, Mike, here to lay it on us. We've got about five myths each. And, yes, with a list saying myths is going to get a little <laughs> bit uh, a little bit uh, challenging by the end of the show. Uh, why don't you start us off with your first myth? Can, can I say that look, I'm looking at my list of myths, and I do have a slight myth myself now, I can't believe it. 
Um, I'm going to upset just about someone with every single myth here, I'm afraid to say. So I'm going to play hardball tonight. I'm not going to, not going to hold back. You just know, go for it. If go you're going to get all, all in, go away and cry somewhere. I don't care. Now, listen, <laughs> first myth is this not, it's not much of a myth, but I know there are people who believe this because I see them on Facebook sometimes. And that is that Max, as in Apple Max, are better for home studio recording. Uh, we went there. We, let's debunk this tired. Debunk it. <laughs> debunk it. Go for it. Oh, Jump. Okay. Well, it, look, I'm, I don't know how to break this to people. They're all just computers. <laughs> They're just computers. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I can't really say anything else about it, but apart it, from that's, that's your point. The, 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 I know it's <laughs> unusual for me to make a short point, so I feel I should elaborate. <laughs> um, I don't want people to go around saying I've got a small point. Now, listen, um, they're all, they, there are some differences, of course. There's some differences. Now, and, and I'm going to point out, say, uh, Logic Pro X, lovely DAW, I must say. Um, I, I do have a Mac as well as a PC, and I have Logic Pro on there. don't get much use these days. I have an old version. Um, but a really, really nice DAW. So I guess if you specifically want to use either Logic Pro or indeed GarageBand, is it GarageBand or GarageBand? I'm not sure. Uh, it depends if, where you are in the world, but yes, it's both. If you specifically <laughs> want to use those, then you are going to need a Mac. That doesn't need, mean it's better. You may prefer the Mac operating system, but there is nothing intrinsically better than um, about a Mac than a PC. Um, and being a bit of a PC builder myself, mm. I would suggest there's a few reasons why I wouldn't buy a, especially a newer Mac. Um, and um, there's awful things like the hard drives being soldered in so that you can't swap them out. <laughs> nice that. What sort of, oh, let me, me say no that. One ever, hard drive never, no, no one ever, no one has ever upgraded the hard drive or ever wanted to add more storage no, to a device. Why would you want to do that, especially as a as a person who produces lots and lots of media? Why would you want? So yeah, look, I'm I'm just going to say um, I've got nothing against Max, but you people, ooh, you need a Mac to have a recording yeah. studio. Absolute rubbish. Oh, rubbish. There you go. That's going to be the quote. Oh, That's going to go on Instagram tomorrow. It's just going to be Mike saying, Max R, and then it's just going to be dot, 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 absolute rubbish. And then uh, yeah. that will be, it will take you completely out of context and say that. <laughs> um, I, I like that because as someone who's never owned a Mac, and this is weird because people mm. say, you're the, you're the GarageBand fanboy, you're the iOS man, and mm. I, I've never owned a Mac. And I'm, I'm in the market for a Mac. I, I do want to buy a Mac because That's I think wrong with them. Cool. Yep. Um, they've only got one mouse button, which I still get freaked out by. I think, do they have two now yet, or are they still no, yeah, you, you you can use no, you can. They have that. <laughs> on mine. I've got the magic mouse. People hate the magic mouse, but I've got it, and it you does it. right. It does many, yeah. So I, I need more than one. Need more than one button, but um, yeah, no, I, I'm the same. Like I have a PC, which is what I'm using right now, and Windows 10 just updated, and now it looks all grey and weird. But that's okay. Um, I'm going to go with it. But uh, I'm going to actually, I'm going to tailgate. No, that's not the right word. I'm going to jump on the tails of that comment and say mm. that my first myth is that uh, Pro Tools is the best recording software for everything, and if you don't mm. have Pro Tools, you can't produce industry standard music. Mm. Mm. And it kind of you kind of said it all well before that a computer is a computer and digital is digital and i say this a bunch of times is that digital recording is actually ones and zeros going into a computer so what pro tools is doing is it's taking whatever you're sending into your mac well, your mac in the case of pro tools or your pc if you're using something else then that's all it is. It's ones and zeros. It's all about the making sure you've got a good performance and a good bit of hardware that's going to take that analog signal, turn it into a digital signal, and turn it into very nice ones and zeros. But the thing is, you don't get ones and zeros with extra fluffiness just because they're sent through Pro Tools versus a Studio One or Reaper or GarageBand. It is all the same. The only difference is your sampling rate and your bit rate, which we don't have time in this one to talk about, but maybe that'll be a, a really nerdy version of creative studio live that we talk about where we're like let's talk about 24 bit versus 16 and 44.1 versus 48 and 96 but we're not going there today 
But yes, if you are using the same gear with the same sampling rate and the same bit rate going into the same piece of hardware, the software is just the software. It is just the interface. There's different processing. There's different plugins. There's different algorithms that may process the sound going out. But the input is going to be the same recording on any piece of software because it's all about the hardware and what's going in. Agree, disagree? I, I agree, and I have to agree because your second point was also my second point. We, we should probably <laughs> compare notes. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll love it. Have all I'll that. And upon that a little bit um, with yeah, Pro Tools. For it. Um, look, I've used Pro Tools a little bit in the past. Didn't care for it especially, I have to admit. So, um, But I've got to say that not only is it um, – hey, look, I, I said I'd play hardball tonight. Not only is it – doesn't doesn't it matter but in many ways it's not as good it's not actually as good as a piece of software as many and what i'm talking about here and it, it's a little bit of nitpicking i have to say but there are limitations with pro tools in other words you have to pay more to get more tracks for example with it yeah. i mean um so there's many many DAWs for some decades now have had unlimited number of tracks on on them you know so um, rubbish like that, you're limited depending on which version on, on the sample rates, things like that. Now, in, I will say it is um, now at 192, but it, up until the end of last year, it was still at 92, regardless of what hardware you were using. Mm. So um, they've always played this silly game. And, um, yeah. you know, they, they get, they've they got by on this myth that you have to have Pro Tools to um, produce professional quality things and People that don't know better just pay the money and get it. And uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we we got people. We we better chat to the folks that are here live, but because by the way, we haven't done a usual yeah. thing where we said who we are and what we do, and you should subscribe to our channels and all those YouTube things. But uh, do all those YouTube things. Hit the like button if you're getting some value, or if you're just having fun with us being all controversial tonight. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to Mike's channel. And to my channel, there's links down in the description. You can jump on those. So uh, Darren here has said Pro Tools is the only only the industry standard because no one would use it if it was called Immature Tools. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite get it. But, yes, Pro oh, versus Immature. Yeah, yeah. Pro it could be like Amateur Tools. I think that would be cool. Call it <laughs> amateur tools. Can you imagine the Pro Tools user if they just changed it to this, like, eh, just a guy tools, whatever. It's just, it's just Amateur Tools. Um, Mobile Metal would actually love the bitrate discussion. There you go. We'll, we'll get really super nerdy about 96 versus 192 versus uh, 24, 32, 16-bit oh. floating points. We can talk floating points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, uh, people are already uh, tuning out. Jade Star says, yes, yeah, so much snobbery still in the music industry. It is a bit sad. It's a little yeah. bit sad that we've got uh, all of the all of the snobbery going on in the music industry. And uh, DJ Southpaw, which is cool. You're, you're lefty. You're a Southpaw. Southpaw. Uh, Apple products in general have always been hard to work on at home. Forget upgrading. <laughs> I'd rather build my own PC and tweak it for what yeah, I Yeah, with you, DJ. I know, I know that uh, that's something that Mike is all about. And apparently mm. Mike needs to uh, check his emails. Because, oh, no, uh, I, I, I've, hey, hey, Thomas, how are you going? I have, <laughs> I have seen this email, and I don't think it was just an email. I think you might have mentioned it somewhere in a comment, and I've just been oh, overloaded with uh, emails and comments the last few days. But I have seen that, and you're absolutely right. In fact, Spitfire Labs do a whole bunch of um, free um, instruments. I mean, they do some very, very high-quality um paid instruments so just going a little bit off topic here uh, but yeah. they also do a whole bunch of uh, free and very interesting ones and uh, thomas mentioned one and I, I think it might be called the felt piano or something like that correct me if I'm wrong uh, thomas but i actually do have it and it's uh, it's really really nice i didn't include it in um in my free pianos vst you know, video this week because there's a whole bunch that I could have included and that just happened to be one of the ones that didn't get in there. But, yeah, thanks for that, Thomas. I'll there reply you to your email as soon as I've spent some time with my missus. Don't, don't, don't worry. He doesn't He doesn't reply to my emails either. It's fine. Yeah. Um, we, we'll move on here. And I'm, I'm actually going to – I'm going to – again, I'm going to just jump on your coattails and talk about this yeah, because yeah. you mentioned virtual instruments, and it's a really <laughs> good point because uh, – and you've got, uh, buried the lead here. I put a poll out on my channel here. I'm going to re release uh, – last week I said I would release the results of the poll at the end of the show, and then I didn't, and then I had to put it in the comments afterwards. So this week I will actually release the, the uh, results of my poll because I put out my five myths. So if anyone's actually follows me and uh, has checked the community tab on the channel, you already know my five myths. So you're going to be like, oh, 
Really? What a letdown. Uh, but yes, the, the, the next one I have here is that the myth is you must use real instruments. And I know we've talked about real instruments versus... Yeah, go on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so real versus virtual, and we've talked about the whole point of, you know, yes, you can have a sampled instrument and, you know, getting an entire Wurlitzer of freaking keyboard in here or like a Rhodes in your own studio versus using a high-quality sampled Rhodes, you're probably going to actually get a better sound. Don't tell anyone, but you might actually get a better sound from a virtual instrument sometime. But that the original virtual instrument was the electric guitar, and I love being lectured and schooled by someone that plays an electric guitar that I'm using virtual instruments and that is wrong when they are using a virtual instrument because they're using a guitar that has not actually got a sound box that is just a bunch of strings on a giant chunk of wood that you then plug in and it's all about the amplifier which is a virtual instrument i'm sorry but an amplifier is a bunch of tubes or a bunch of transistors that is a virtual instrument it is not real it is not creating sound waves using a real piece of acoustic equipment so can we agree to stop telling us that we can't use virtual instruments and that every instrument is valid because real doesn't matter anymore. Um, if I had a mic, I would drop it. I don't want to drop this. Yeah, too good. good. Well, I'll, I'll stop you there, especially <laughs> as um, especially as not of you stolen my point, but you've jumped hey! in before me. You did two points in a row. So <laughs> did I really? Yeah, I thought, I thought you were one to five. There, you no, can have two in a row now. I'll sit back. Play, and... I'll just we'll, we'll give up on the numbers of points. I'll just expand <laughs> upon your point here because it, it was it. one of the points I was gonna I was gonna make anyway. Oh yeah. So um so yeah, um one of the beefs I have about this um is I'll give you an example. Um, drums. Mm -hmm. There's there's people that say uh, real drums uh, always sound better. Well. Um, maybe, maybe if your drummer has a really <laughs> awesome, really, really awesome drum kit, like a top quality mm -hmm. drum kit, and um, if you just want to change that snare sound, he, he's got a bunch of like 10 different snares that you can swap out. I mean, if, if yeah. your drummer has got that, it's good. And also, if you happen to be able to record that drum kit in a really awesome top quality room, you know, that you'd find in, you know, a top-notch LA studio or something, and um, and also if if you happen to have really amazingly like amazing vintage mics etc. Record it with, then yeah, sure, go for your life. Uh, but most of us are dealing with a local drummer who's got some dodgy kit which he doesn't change the skins on off, often enough, nor does he know how to tune them. And um, and uh, you're going to record them in some room that you happen to have available with the uh, five or six mics in your collection, which you have, what you're going to make do with what you have. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that, um, you know, we, we're comparing apples and oranges here when we say, say that all drums are always better, real drums are always better. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think there's certain virtual instruments which uh, really do have do very well. Um, even though I've done lots on my channel about virtual guitars, um, mm -hmm. Uh, especially with ample sound stuff, um, I've done a fair. I, I still don't think they're quite there with virtual guitars. I think there's mm -hmm. two nuances nuances in um, guitars. Um, that hey, if you're a keyboard player and you need a guitar sound, go for your life. Yep. Uh, I think drums are really very very good. I think pianos are very very good as well. Actually, yeah. acoustic pianos, um, as you say, things like organs, Hammond organs. I don't know. I think they're very, very good. Even strings, very, very good. So, yeah, mm, I'm with you, Pete. I, I did think you would be because uh, we've had this discussion before and we're on the same page on that one. But uh, well, yeah. we've changed our mind at least. That's the main well, thing. That is good because we're both old men and change is bad and you never want to change your mind or take on board anyone else's opinions. But, no, I, I, I do uh, I, I do like this. So Tank, Tank on Cleaning here says a virtual instrument still has the word instrument in it, case closed. <laughs> uh, yes, so an instrument is an instrument is an instrument. So I, I do like that, that, that comment. And, yes, I, I like all of your points. And you, you, you are right about the guitar thing, but and it's weird because I talk a lot about the garage band guitars, which, don't sound super great, but you know what? People that don't have guitars and don't play guitars have programmed some ridiculously good guitar solos using a yeah, virtual right. guitar. And I've seen some of your videos. Like seriously, you need to mm. check, 
just search creative source virtual guitar mm. and you'll find out some of the uh, the cool guitars that Mike has. I don't normally, you know, now, post up your button. Yeah, and, and, and that's a really good point, though. <laughs> that's a very good point. I did a survey um, on my uh, channel this week to ask people about um, drums and, you know, whether people are mostly using virtual drums or, or mm. real drums or a mixture of the base. And around about um, 90% of my viewers are using virtual drums. Now that more than likely going to be because of space, cost, talent, all of those things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing is, if you are going to use virtual drums, make sure you get good at it. It is your job to, to become a very, very proficient and awesome virtual drum player. You can't just Correct. expect where yeah, they're going to take care of it. Um, so yeah, and and Vachi's just mentioned um, in the in the comments there. What about using loops, drum loops? Um, really good point. I mean, you know, there's some really good stuff out there. It's not my particular preference because um, I tend to like. I, I don't even use. You know, like with the virtual drums, you get a whole bunch of MIDI files with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rhythms. I don't even use those. I like to make my rhythms based upon the actual song from the ground up. But, yeah, there are some really nice sounding loops out there. You can make good use of those. Mm. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, yeah, because I've given you some love, I'm going to say I've got a video coming out where I'm actually mixing someone, one of my viewers who has made a song in GarageBand, and that's going to be mm. out in a couple of days' time. Mm. And they used a bunch of virtual instruments, and they actually used some some loops, some GarageBand uh, guitar loops and drum loops, and it sounds really, really good. Sounds yeah, awesome. Nice. And, uh, cool. Yeah, so uh, we're going to jump into that. I'm going to throw it back to you because uh, I think I stole your I stole your thing. So uh, why don't you give me an original one so that I don't like steal your next one, and then uh, you have to like you know ride on my coattails. Well, I'm going to I'm going to continue to upset people really, and and do um, it. No. Yes, please do. So there's a myth out there that um, <laughs> that you don't need RGB lighting in a recording. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that wasn't my point. I'll, I'll go with my actual point. It's, I think it's going to be my last one, actually, and it's it's pretty much Ooh. along the same lines as the real drums. And this mm. is the outboard gear, outboard hardware is always best. Mm. And we're talking about usually 19-inch racks that you see in studios. And, yep. um, yeah, so let's have a little chat about that. Okay. Um, Bring it on. I believe, it's my belief that... In certain cases, outboard gear is the best. Mm. The, the, it may be mar only marginally better, but it is better, <laughs> you know. However, that is if you have really good quality outboard gear. Yeah. Um, the, for example, let's think of an example. Yeah, if you go out and buy some, um, you know, $150 secondhand Behringer uh, compressor, just mm. because it's a real hard piece of hardware does not mean it's going to be better better than that really awesome plug-in that mm. company with no name has out there. Um, it's just it's just you've got to go for it on you know a case by case basis. The fact is is that in order to get um, really good you know say vintage gear or 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 vintage style gear, which is either using tubes or solid state and adds all that warmth and harmonics and saturation, all that good stuff, you do mm. need to spend your money. You're going to have to spend yeah. some money, some decent amount of money on that. And um, you're usually talking in the high hundreds at least. There's a couple of bits of gear which in the lower hundred which are worth talking about, but usually in the high hundreds and then into the thousands for the classic pieces of gear. And you yeah. can get an awful lot of plug-in for that money. So Look, it's it's not just not, not the case. And this is backed up by a number of people, and I wish I'd written notes on this, um, but a number of uh, producers who are now producing, uh, mixing completely in the box, completely mm. in the box, not producers. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm saying. Now, yes. you know, a little, little extra on that one as well. Ooh. Do bear in mind as well, the way you're going to use this gear is this. You're either going to use it on the way in, Mm -hmm. So, you know, put a bit of compression on, say, a vocal on the way in. If you why, – why are you going to have to use that on the way in? Because you're not going to have an effects loop on every single channel and, and have, yeah. you know, 20 of these compressors available. You're going to have to commit. And that's fine. Some people like to commit. Good on them. 
um, but I prefer a little bit of flexibility. So, you know, just keep that in mind. There are some massive, massive advantages to plugins. You know, recall of settings, obviously, it's automatically done. Most of us don't even think about recall. But, you yeah. know, so all of that kind of stuff plays into it. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a plugins man. <laughs> yeah, and look, as am I. And it would be a good time to say at this mm. point that, yes, we're talking about myths here because I think the reason we wanted to do this show is that a lot of these myths are actually destructive in that they make people think that you can't create music unless you have all the things, unless you have the yeah. right gear, unless you have the right mm. software, mm. unless you have the right computer. Mm. And the truth of it is if you have a really good song, you could get a freaking like cassette recorder from the 1980s and hit record and play your really good song and you're going to get a really good song. The difference is that these days we have cheap and effective gear that we can use in the home studio to get really good recordings. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're using a free bit of software like GarageBand or like uh, Cakewalk on your PC, or if you're spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on a giant Pro Tools HD rig, it, it's still, you still need a good song. You still need to know how to record it well. And you still need to be playing well to actually get a good recording. So, uh, yes, I think, I think I agree, which is you know, surprising. I know that, that I actually agree with your point, but no, I, I like the fact that we can have this discussion, but I wanted to make sure that people are aware that each to their own. And if you want to, this is the thing, I, I get in trouble because I say, don't worry about the gear, just use GarageBand, use you know, $200 interface and you'll be fine. And people say, but I want to do this and I want to get this sound. And my response is always more power to you. If you want to have a <laughs> studio with all the dials and all the lights and all the RGB lighting behind you, as Mike's uh, fades into purple behind him as we speak, <laughs> then go your hardest, to be honest, like just, just do your thing. But remember at the end of the day, if you want to be creating your best music, um, yes, you need to just be working on your music, and that's kind of well, the you know, and and you know, over the years and the different, I mean, me and you are getting on, you know, a little bit, so we've got a few decades behind us. I've got <laughs> to say that um, I have met some people both in the in the studio sort of environment and live with mm. who uh, spent a lot of money on great instruments, amps, um, all that kind of thing. And people who have spent a lot of money to go into professional studios. And I've heard some utter trash over the years from people. I've heard some really, really bad music from some of those people over the years. Embarrassing, embarrassing music. Unfortunately, yeah. it's what they used to say about, um, I think John Wayne used to say this, you know, if you can't fight, wear a big hat. Well, <laughs> what happens <laughs> What happens is in in the music world, if you've got no talent, you buy lots of gear. Perhaps you uh, spend a lot of time making yourself look a certain way and you spend a lot of time on image as well, but there's an awful lot of people just buy gear and uh, think that that makes them it, and they ain't. Agree. <laughs> uh, and I, I like it. And, I, and I'll move on because, uh, yes, we, we've got some some folks here. And I, and I wanted to throw this up here. So uh, Vachir from Recording Studio 9 says, bring someone who owns many outboard gear. It's a myth that you need outboard gear to sound professional. Mm. So it's good to hear from someone that has outboard gear that's, that agrees that you don't need the outboard gear, but it's also about knowing your gear and plug-in. And I couldn't mm. agree more that it is 100% about whatever you use. And that's, this would be a good parting comment, but I've got one more thing to say, so it's not going to be my parting comment. Right. Um, a good thing to say is that, yes, it doesn't really matter what you use, but it's about knowing how to get the best out of whatever you're using. And if you've got your gear, I've got this Samson mix pad that I use for all of my recording and my live streams, and it's not the best piece of kit. It's like a $200 mixer, but I know this $200 mixer like the back of my hand now, yeah. so that means I can get a really good sound out of it because I know exactly the settings to dial in to get the best sound. So so, yes, it's not about the gear you have. It's often about knowing the gear you have and getting the best sound out of what you have. Mm. Mm. Uh, my, my parting thought, and then I'll throw to you for your parting mm. thought, Mike, is that, uh, and I had I had some other myths here, but we've kind of covered them. It's all about, you know, you can't yeah. get a good sound in the home studio. You can't get good quality recordings from like a $200 interface. You can and you can. So let's just cover that for really quickly. But the final thing I wanted to say, and this is like, you might've heard that my mantra here on Studio Live today is create, record, release. So mm -hmm. the creation we've talked a lot about, the recording we've talked a lot about. So write a good song, record it well with the gear you have, doing the best that you possibly can. The mm -hmm. releasing side, I, I still hear from a lot of people that 
you, in order to release music, you need a record label. You need to have all of the know-how. You need to have a distribution mm. company behind you that's going to like promote. You need a promotions team. You need marketing. You need all these things. The beauty part is that no, that has all been democratized. Like uh, we've got it's people. Say, have you been time traveling and going and talking to people from the nineteen nineties about this? Well, about? yeah, it yeah. is very weird. You say that, but you would be <laughs> shocked if you're not in the the scene. And it's weird. Like mm. I, we've said this before, but we we hang out on groups called home recording forums, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna create some enemies here now. So you you've done your fair share of like making people yeah, hate. Yeah. It. So, yeah. um, you hang out on these home recording forums, and people are like, "So when are you going to the studio?" And I, I'm gonna try and get a record deal. I'm like, "What part of home studio recording didn't you understand?" You record it yourself. You release it yourself. You don't need a recording studio. You don't need to pay someone like five hundred dollars an hour to record your song, and you certainly don't need to pay some shyster. There we go, number two shyster. Some shyster <laughs> promotions <laughs> agent or marketing company like thousands of dollars to give you an Instagram strategy and then to do all these things. The internet is a hundred percent free and 100% democratized. Yeah, you can pay Facebook ads and Instagram ads and you can do all of that sort of promotional stuff, but you can do all that yourself too. Don't yeah. be fooled into thinking that you need to have this. And the amount of people that still come to me and say, hey, I want to get famous. How do I get a record deal? And I'm like, are people even still striving for record deals in 2019? Is that even a thing? Do you realize that when you get a record deal, all that means is that they take 95% of your income <laughs> and you end up with nothing or possibly a debt to the record company at the end because they advance you all this money on the hope that you'll make a single. And when you fail, they take all your money and they just throw you in the gutter. That yes. is what I don't understand. Independent artists, create independently, release your music, just do it. Well, well, <laughs> said. well said. I mean, goodness me, how can I top that? You know, <laughs> really. Um, I, I, I want to finish. Uh, I think we've had a good rant here, actually. Oh, it's a little bit ranty, hasn't it? I love the rant. It's a rant. But, um. Yeah, um, I just want to finish with this. Um, if you do want to buy a really nice guitar <laughs> and if you do want to buy uh, some nice uh, outboard gear and if you want to go and buy yourself a really fancy microphone, and then, then definitely do it. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you can afford it comfortably, mm -hmm. um, uh, it will it probably in some ways you'll enjoy that little bit of extra quality that you get out of it so I, i'm not against that you know mm -hmm. um if i win the lotto um tomorrow <laughs> you know no guesses for where i'll be going to buy things my local music store will be best friends with me um so yeah um if, if you can afford it do it but don't just don't imagine that that's your ticket to success because it just isn't mm -hmm. just get this in your heads now guys you've got to get good at making music not get good at buying musical gear. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have, we've gone through the whole thing without talking about gas, about gear acquisition syndrome. Oh, right. you, you, what did you talk about it for? Don't bring I that. Yes. I brought it down. I brought it down a whole peg. Uh, yes. Thank you. We're, we're about done here. Thank you to everyone who's been yeah. here live. We've yeah. loved the chat here. I know we've we, we've been ranting so much, or at least I have, that I haven't even been uh, paying enough attention to the chat. So thank you to everyone who's been here live. If you've been here on the replay, you haven't missed out because if you've enjoyed our rants and you got some value out of today, you can hit the like button or, as Mike says, hit the dislike button twice or whatever it is you say on your channel. Um, you can leave us a comment. If you've got a question, or well, we'd like to hear your own myths. Like, what, what do you actually think about yeah. this topic? And uh, I did promise that I would finish up by revealing my poll. So oh, yeah, I actually yeah. put my five you Reveal your poll on camera. I will <laughs> reveal my poll on camera right now. Okay. Uh, so we've got 137 votes about my poll. And uh, here, here are my five things. So my five were you must use real instruments, which we talked about. Uh, I also said that audio interfaces have crappy preamps, which is a, what a lot of people say. They're like, you need a tube preamp that costs $1,000 to make a good recording. You don't. Um, Pro Tools is the best recording software for everyone. Uh, that was number three. Number four was you can't get good quality recordings in a home studio. That was really generic and mm -mm. yeah. Um, and you need a record company to release your own music. So they were my five myths. And not surprisingly, because I made it so generic and so easy to vote for, uh, you can't get good quality recordings in the home studio. One with 41% of the votes. So yes. uh, that was not surprising in the slightest because, again, it was loaded to be that. And that is kind of 
our point here. And yes, that is an absolute ploy to make you watch and subscribe to Mike at Creative Source and to yeah, Pete. Yeah. I mean, to think, like, yeah, I mean, you also, um, people, I assume, know who you are by now. My goodness. You are <laughs> Mr. Garage Man, aren't you? You're going to have to actually change your name. Great show. Great rant. Can I, uh, can I finish off with a link? I would love you to. All right. I'm just going to copy and paste it into the live chat here. There we go. All right. This is not so something rude. I was going to say, right. are you ending with some like weird, awkward dead air? Oh, um, this is a little bit. I'm just going to put this. It's a bit for the guitarist here. And this is by one of my favorite YouTubers, um, Paul Davids. Do you know him? Uh, no. Awesome oh, guy. Guitari guy, and he does. This is a bit of an old video, this one, but he um, does a side by side comparison of a wire strat and a real fender strat. My one of my favorite topics, didn't manage to talk about it today, but I've put the link in there in the live, uh, in the live uh, chat there. So, guys, go and check that out after you've watched this video on Pete's channel, and then come right back to Pete's channel afterwards as well. Don't stay, exactly. over don't stay over there, you can only watch Pete and Mike forever from, from now on yeah. in. Uh, so, yes, that, that will be there, and I'll even throw that in the comments. So if you're not here live, I'll throw that in the description of this video afterwards. So <laughs> thank you to everyone who's been here. We've missed a bunch of people. We missed our great man, Home of Crap, who was here. It's a great name. Uh, Clint's been here. We've got Thomas and Jade and Tank on Cleaning and Just Because and Edward Barnett, uh, DJ Southpaw. Um, we've had Vachi from Recording Studio 9. Woozle, Mobile Metal been here and a bunch of people that I'm going to totally forget. It's your boy, Nick, etc. Sorry if I've missed your name and that you've been here live. But if you're watching on the replay again, we love you also. Please leave us a comment if you've got any questions or your own myths or your own rants that you want to go on about this stuff. On behalf of my co-host, Mike, over at Creative Source, and we've got our names today. There you go. You can see our names. We will see you next week for Creative Studio Live. Bye.